This is the hardest, stupidest boss fight in the entire of Persona 3 Reload. The secret boss fight unlocks only after completing 80% of Elizabeth's request, inviting her to your room, and also having reached floor 255 of Tetheris. So why is the Elizabeth fight so frustratingly hard? It's because she has a bunch of rules, or well, laws, that you must follow, otherwise you lose the fight instantly. The rules are, you have to be solo, you cannot notify, absorb or repel any of Elizabeth's attacks, you cannot use Armageddon when she is above 10,000 HP, and lastly, you must beat the fight in 50 turns. On top of all these rules, Elizabeth has a whopping 20,000 HP, takes 2 turns in a row at one time, can use every element in the game, and has exactly 0 weaknesses. Which is why, if you want to beat this fight, you better be sufficiently prepared or you're gonna get your ass beat. Thankfully, there is a small exploit we can use and I'm going to show you how to do just that. Elizabeth has three different phases. The first is from 20,000 HP to 13,000 HP. The second from 13,000 HP to below 10,000 HP. And the last from 20,000 HP to no HP. However, with this exploit we're going to use, we will skip the entire phase 3 and end the battle at phase 2. Elizabeth has an attack order and it's usually something like this. If you want to beat her, you have to know exactly what will be coming next or you might accidentally nullify, absorb or repel an attack and your run will be over just like that. Thankfully, there's a pretty easy way to remember her pattern, she's just going from left to right. For the normal elements, it's usually accompanied with a physical attack except for ice which is why it's electric burst strike and wind or pierce. After you deal 7000 damage and you hit her one more time, she says some dialogue and you go into her second phase. In her second phase, she immediately does a max damage Megidolan and there is no way to dodge it, which is why you need a persona with enduring soul. Afterwards, she uses Thor for 3 turns and if you do not get her below 10,000 HP, you will lose the fight instantly. If you succeed in getting her below 10,000 HP, she will immediately heal back to full health and that's when phase 3 starts. In between phase 2 and 3 is where we're going to be using the exploit. The idea is to repel an attack back to her to get her below 10,000 HP. But wouldn't that cause us to lose the fight? Normally, yes, and that's why this persona you use to repel her attack must have Endure because we can't use Enduring Soul a second time. And after she drops below 10,000 HP, we will use Armageddon to deal max damage to her and immediately end the fight. So what kind of personas do we bring for this fight? There are really only 3 or 4 types of personas that you want to bring. The first would be a persona that has auto everything so that you don't have to waste a turn using Heat Riser at the start of the battle. The next would be a support kind of persona. The idea is that this persona cannot absorb repel or deflect any of the elements. So Chiyo is only weak to electric and he learns Drain Strike but of course you can unlearn Drain Strike so I'm using Chiyo. He has Concentrate, Debilitate, Heat Riser and Charge if you use physical attacks. I also gave him Ellie Dance just in case. Of course he doesn't have to be Chiyo, you can use Orpheus Telos as well but I do not have Orpheus Telos because I didn't know you needed to max everyone's social link just to get him and it's my first playthrough and I went through it blind. So if you don't have him then I would recommend Chiyo as well. The last type of persona would be a damage dealer. Obviously you can use Office Telos as well as Office Telos would be the best choice actually. But again I don't have Office Telos so I'm using other types of personas. One such persona that I would have used is Hello. I have Drain Ice here but obviously you can remove Drain Ice and he has very strong Almighty damage so if you give him a mighty boost, a mighty M, whatever, he will be really really strong. Also he doesn't repel or drain most of the elements other than light and dark so you can use him for most turns other than when Elizabeth uses light or dark attacks. The persona that I used for my run was Saturnel because I invested very very heavily into him but he's a DLC persona so if you don't have him then I would recommend using Hello instead. I have Now Physical here but during my run I didn't use Now Physical because obviously you would just get one shot if you have Now Physical. 
I use the evasion, greater evasion to physical attacks, which you get from Venedis, I think. I also have Enduring Soul, which is very important when going from phase 1 to phase 2, because you have to catch a max damage Megidolan, or your run will just end. The last type of persona that you need is one that has Repel Strike and has Endure. Well, I don't have Endure here, but I used it in the fight, I just didn't register it to my compendium. This is the most crucial persona, because if you don't have a persona that can do exactly repel strike and endure you are never going to win the fight unless you beat phase 3 normally as for equipment i'm using lucifer's blade which you can only get from a high level lucifer i'm mainly using this for the extra stats because all stats plus 7 is quite a lot for armor i'm using armor of light because it reduces magic damage by a ton and has a crazy amount of defense unfortunately you can only get this from a very high level messiah so you have to be very end game-ish already anyways but I think at floor 255, you would have unlocked Fusing Messiah anyways, so you just have to farm a little bit. And then Shoes of Light is also from Messiah, but it gives you Ellie Dance, which helps you to dodge extra attacks and stuff like that. As for accessories, I was using Insta Heal, which helps to instantly cure ailments. But there is actually a better accessory, which, we, which would be Amrita. Amrita completely blocks ailments, which is actually better than Insta Heal. There is a slight difference, but it's a lot better. And it's because you can sometimes get shocked by Rain of Thunder. And Thor usually follows that up with God's Hand. So that means there's a higher chance for you to be crit on if you are shocked. So Amrita completely prevents that, which is great for avoiding extra damage that you don't want to take.
Stone. One more hit and then she goes to phase 2. Charge up my TLG now, I stall a bit. This wind. I'll kill you something now. One for one now. Omotta Tori no sono tsuyasa. Desu ga... Rekiyoku! Charge focus please, charge focus please, 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 please. Okay. I think I win. I'm gonna go 10, I'm gonna reflect, then I'm gonna get him. She's slightly below 10,000 HP right now. So I just have to survive this in the air. And then I'm gonna get him, and she should die. My turn? Yep. Let's go.
Nice, let's run. Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> Once I figured out what I was doing wrong. Instant win. Yeah, so we just fought for nothing. There's no achievement for doing this as well. Yeah, so we just fought for nothing. There's no achievement for doing this as well. Yeah, so we just fought for nothing. こちらをお持ちください。こちらは報酬ではございません。私の気持ちです。No office delos as well. Let's go. では、ごきげんよう。Now to call, now to collect my reward. お待ちした。ご報告。それでは感謝いたします。オムニポテントオーブ。それでは。それ。プレジド。オムニポテント。ノーオールエクセプト。Oh mate, that's that's kind of OP. Kind of OP. Nice, okay. So that's what you get for beating her. No achievement, no nothing. You just get a sense of accomplishment and uh, omnipotent up. <laughs>